It has come to me um, the uh, rather hazardous task to be the last speaker of the day on a day that's running slightly behind. And so I want to keep my comments um, very brief. But there are a couple of things um, that I thought I'd add in conclusion, um, particularly uh, in light of the question of uh, Asian art research in Australia, New Zealand, past, present, and future. Um, I gave myself, in planning the schedule, the, um, the task of, of going last because I thought somehow it would be easier. And I thought that I'd stick Olivier um, with the more difficult challenge of addressing uh, the field, a field that I didn't entirely understand, frankly. Um, and one of my points of great gratitude um, and respect for today is that as someone who is very new here from abroad um, and who is still trying to figure out the ways in which I am or might be or might not be Australian as opposed to American, um, that I have, that so many people have come to participate in, in this day with me and Olivier, for which I'm very, very grateful. Um, but maybe I will then sort of emphasize my naive position for a moment as someone who until very recently was entirely American. Actually, as soon as that comes out of my mouth, that sounds very problematic. Um, but in any case, to, to emphasize for a moment some of the things that I've observed about Asian art research today and since I've arrived, and I feel as I've learned so much about the field in Australia today that the past, that this morning is a foreign country. Um, I mean, it just feels so long ago to me, uh, in a good way, in terms of how many questions have been opened up. Um, but one of them is that um, I observe that um, a great deal of the conversation that occurs about Asian art research as a field here, and that actually is really true of Australian if I can say such a thing, and I don't know if it's true of New Zealanders as I've not yet been to New Zealand, um, is that there's an incredible engagement with the question of what it means to be Australian in both a good and bad way. By which I mean, I don't mean that the question is good and bad. I mean, uh, we are very engaged with the discourses about identity, which is a, a national identity, an individual identity, and that, that identity is very much in flux. And so a great deal of what Asian art research in Australia and New Zealand that I heard about today had to do with um, positionality and identity and, and things like this, which I think is super important. But one of the things I also want, and, and, and I, th I say that because if I imagined holding this same day in America, Asian art research in America, I think that a lot of the reflection would be, well, there isn't anything distinctively American about this because America is somehow... We, so much of our identity politics is caught up in having a fixed, stable identity politics that was settled in, 17, in the late 18th century and we haven't changed. And that's not true here, and that's very exciting. But what I would also offer is that actually a great deal of, about what I see as distinctive about Asian art research in Australia and New Zealand is not about identity or maybe as a product of identity, but that is actually sort of particular historiographic and methodological issues. Um, issues relating to engagement with artists and objects, um, issues relating to our physical positionality, our geography. Um, I am very struck by the number, by the frequency with which, and I was the moment I arrived in Australia, by the frequency with which we describe Australia as the West. And it didn't take me long to think of all the things that I wouldn't have described Australia, or, or of all the ideas that make me question the validity, the validity of the construct of the West. The idea that Australia would be the West and not the East or the North or the South, not, definitely not the North, but the East or the South, just as much as is the West, I think is very important. And so I would suggest as we move forward, one of the things we might think about is what a Australian and New Zealand school of Asian art history looks like or Asian art research looks like. Um, are there particular characteristics of the way we practice the field here um, that are useful, both as ways of self-check, as sort of self-reflection for limitations, but also as ways of recognizing strengths and virtues, um, particularly in interdisciplinarity, which we saw um, really strongly um, 
throughout the day to day. I think a sort of openness to methodology, to venue, to environment, to medium, um, that is not necessarily true in your American art history, which is, uh, which is a place of borders and gates and definitions. Um, and so that's, that's one thought um, uh, that I have. The other um, is uh, the question of diffusion versus cohesion that I raised, um, that Olivia and I raised in the call. Um, when we first came up with this call, we mooted the idea that art history here is, or art research here is very, very diffuse. And I meant that in a number of ways. I meant that in a sort of positive way in the sense that it's practiced in lots of different fields and departments, and this is a strength, but also that we are in some ways a lot of little islands um, that practice independently. And there aren't always connections and logical relationships. I noticed that, you know, obviously, Cragoma, Brisbane has one of the finest collections of contemporary Asian art um, in the world or outside of Asia. But until two months from now, didn't have a continuing position teaching Asian art history. Um, that Melbourne, I mean, not only did John point out that there's very little awareness of what is actually quite a fine collection of pre-modern Chinese painting, but until some time from now, doesn't have a continuing full-time lecture in Asian art. Um, and that's not to say that every museum has to have a counterpart in the academy to be valid validated in any way. More what I mean to say is that we want to start emphasizing the strengths and focusing on some of the strengths that we have um, in ways that I think that we haven't always done. Um, I noticed that Natalie uh, commented, you know, there was this question, a serious conversation about where is modern art? Well, that's a real question in the museum. But of course, thanks to John's work and the work of many other people, that's not at all a question in the academy in Australia. If anything, the question is where is pre-modern art in the university in, in Australia, um, which is, is, is very much um, Charlotte's hard work. Not the saying, it means it's Charlotte and me at some level. Um, and that's not to minimize that. It's more to say, I think that we want to continue to build upon strengths. Um, of which there are very many. Um, and then the last comment that I want to say uh, is that, um, and I feel a little bit like I'm channeling Mark Ledbury, but many others in saying this, um, is to quote an American, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, what happens here and what happens in Melbourne and what happens in Brisbane and Adelaide and Perth and Christchurch and Wellington and Hobart all of that is to the good. And I think that that's not only true across Asian art, um, but I think that's true also across art history and across other disciplines um, that value the visual or the material or broadly art topics. Um, as we develop exhibitions in one place, it's all to the good. Today, um, you know, my last thanks go not only to the presenters, but to the attendees of which we're down to a sort of hearty core. But as I may have said this morning, we had, outside of the attendees, we had 130 registrants for today. Um, 130 registrants, not for an art history conference, but actually, if we really think about it, for an art historiography conference. That's a pretty esoteric topic for which we attracted a really strong audience. Um, as I said in my opening comments today, I think that puts the lie to the notion that the arts are under threat. Um, the arts are under threat because someone is selling us, someone with purse strings is telling us that they're under threat. But in fact, there's a very strong and vibrant community um, here that is what I can say brought me to Australia. When I was offered this opportunity, what I saw and what I've experienced since is what's made me very glad that I've made this choice. Um, and so I am very grateful that so many people have commented on the importance of convening this event. Um, I that suggests to me that, unbeknownst to me, that there's been a sense that it was necessary, and I'm glad that, that it's happened. I hope it's the start of many more. I hope that many of the topics that we didn't get to today for a variety of reasons are addressed in the future um, by other people, no, um, by other organizers, I should say, um, and that I'm invited. Um, and I look forward to tomorrow very much. 
I encourage you all to look forward to the publication uh, next year. And thank you all very, very much for coming. Um, it's been a great day.